Hello and welcome back to London Cycle Routes. Today I'll be showing you how to cycle from Surbiton in southwest London to Teddington just up the river. This ride takes about 25 minutes and you can do the whole thing on quiet streets and protected cycle lanes without running into any traffic. By public transport this journey requires a bus and usually takes about half an hour so it's a little bit quicker by bike. If you find this video useful or you just enjoy watching it then please don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube as I try to post new ones like it every week or so. All right let's get going. So we're starting on Claremont Road pretty much right opposite Surbiton Station and you want to head towards this road which is called the Crescent and uh, this street is reasonably quiet and the first stretch of this uh, of this ride starts on quieter residential streets. Um, There'll be also parts where we go on a segregated cycle lane or two and also through some uh, shared paths later on. Don't, mi don't miss this turning onto Grove Road and just go straight down here. Now, um, just a bit of context to this video. Uh, this is in the London Borough of Kingston, which is um, a, a so-called mini Holland Borough. So basically that means that uh, Kingston Council got a load of funding from the, uh, uh, from the, the old mayoralty to uh, basically soup up its cycle infrastructure and uh, you know make it generally a good place to cycle. Other boroughs that have had this are Waltham Forest and Enfield. Um, and yeah, Kingston, there's some nice stuff here in Kingston. It's um, it's not quite as comprehensive as Waltham Forest, but there is some decent infrastructure that's been put in. This is a really good example, the Portsmouth Road Cycleway. Um, it's uh, really fantastic. It's a segregated cycleway. You can see these uh, separating curbs between us and the traffic. It's nice and wide. Um, it's a two-way cycle track, so people coming the other direction can uh, will be on you know to the right of you here. And uh, it's a great way of getting from Kingston to Town Centre to Surbiton Town Centre and back again. Um, the bus stops here, by the way, the track turns into a sort of shared path at the bus stops. So if there's anybody waiting at the bus stops, then you should give way to them. Um, this isn't that's not the best way to do a bus stop. You'd rather that a cycle track went behind the bus stop. It's called a bus stop bypass. But it is a way of saving space, and this isn't the widest of roads, and it's quite impressive that they've managed to get a, a two-way cycleway down here. Um, you can kind of tell that they've, I think they've removed the, uh, what would have been a pavement from this side, but it doesn't really matter because there's a pavement on the other side. There's plenty of zebra crossings between the two, and of course, there's this really beautiful path along the Thames, um, which uh, you know I think most, most people would rather walk on. And of course, the pavement does reappear at various points their space. Um, I've walked around here before and it's not a, a chore or anything like that, it's actually a very lovely place to walk around so it's great that they could squeeze in this lane here. You can see that the style of the, uh, the segregated cycle track has actually changed compared to what we were on earlier by the way, instead of these sep instead of these freestanding curbs protecting us from the traffic we actually have a step down to the traffic almost like a pavement um, and I think that works perfectly fine, it's really nice. It's also great that they've maintained the um, the sort of integrity of the cycle track as you get come into Kingston Town Centre because too often these things give up. Um, I say that, but actually the cycle track is about to give up as we come onto Kingston High Street. But it doesn't really matter. Um, this street is not really a through route for cars. People don't really uh, don't don't really drive down here, as you can see. Um, it is a bus route, and it is mainly that you'll see the occasional bus, but it is fine to cycle on. Um, turn off left here onto uh, onto Marketplace. This whole square is really, really lovely. Um, one thing about cycling in it though is that it is rather busy. This this was a particularly busy day. It was a, a Saturday, I think, and very, very sunny, so lots of people out. It is shared with pedestrians, um, so just be courteous as you go through an area like this, and you know, don't go too fast or scare anybody. You want to bear right onto Church Street. Um, and again, you are allowed to cycle here, by the way, I have double checked that. There are some pedestrian places where you can't cycle, but you are allowed to do it uh, on this bit. And then turn left into uh, into Wood Street, and you can see there's more of a formal cycle path here, although it's not particularly well demarcated, so people do walk in it. And then out onto this street here, this is also, also Wood Street, and this street is another street that's really just used by buses as well. So again, you won't see traffic. now. Bear to the right and you'll get onto this, uh, this cycle track here, and this is quite nice. Most of the ring road around Kingston Town Centre has cycle tracks or at least shared paths around it. It's a variable quality and this is probably one of the better bits. Um, there's a toucan crossing here, 
So we're going over this and uh, another Toucan Crossing as well. That's a signal pedestrian crossing which also allows cycles. Um, and then we head for Skern Road, so under the railway bridge and through the little bollards and onto this street which has had its through traffic removed with those bollards and uh, also another set of bollards at the end here. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, again, we're off the cycle track, we're on the main carriageway here, but it's uh, it's really quiet. There's more bikes than there are actually cars, I think. And that, we were only on it for a short period of time as well, because we're back on a path now. This is a fully fledged sort of cycle path. Um, you know, you won't find any cars on the path. Um, and then it's back on the back on the quiet street again, Lower King's Road. But uh, not for long, because we want to bear left here through this little cut through. And head up Lower Ham Road and anybody who knows the area will know that we're going uh, basically north, straight north here and if we stayed sort of going straight north we'd end up in the sort of uh, the village of Ham um, which is a, a very cute name I think it's uh, it's a very sort of suburban bit of town you can see this is quite low density um, this street uh, because of this uh, this closure coming up ahead there's no through traffic on it so yeah you can see here loads of people riding their bikes and it's because cars can't drive through those planters there and uh, this has recently been improved I think uh, during the pandemic they they closed the street to uh, to through traffic and it's uh, made it a really nice place to cycle and created a great continuous route along the Thames here loads of people not just cycling but also able to walk in the road um, for the first time without really having to worry about cars I can think of a lot of places where I would love them to do that yeah, so it's lovely to see families out there enjoying it really really good um yeah this is fantastic brilliant uh, brilliant cycleway here and as you can see people can still access these buildings by vehicles if they need to but that happens very very infrequently so the traffic is very very low yeah these parked cars here this is just as good as a cycle path if not better because it's it's actually quite wide um and the frequency with which you'll run into a motor vehicle is so low that it really doesn't make a difference um i I really, really like what they've done here, and I think it's a great job. Um, unfortunately, we're coming off the main carriageway, and we're now going onto the Thames path. Um, there are two sort of forks of this path. You can see down there, and there's here. This is the surfaced bit. It's that you may not be able to see in the video. This is actually a sort of a sealed sort of concrete surface. It's uh, it's kind of a tan colour to make it look more natural um, than sort of asphalt. Um, if you'd gone down. Down, if you're taking the left fork though that is more of a dirt track so um, I'm not even sure you can cycle down there but you can cycle up here certainly um, this is okay um, it's uh, it could do with being a little bit wider so I would say that this is um, probably about as busy as, as it's going to get you know it's not going to be as busy for this certainly if you're you know commuter hours on a weekday this is a sunny Saturday there's nowhere else that people love to come on a sunny Saturday than down by the river um, this is a really idyllic spot. It's lovely. Um, you know, I'll be, you know, blunt again. This is a shared path. There's pedestrians here. Don't ride too quickly. I mean, obviously this video is sped up, so we're going at a pretty considerate pace here, and we're giving people as much of a berth as we can. I think everyone's being quite nice. Probably wouldn't want to walk down here as a pedestrian, though. I mean, it's, it's uh, the path is a little bit narrow. Um, I think it would be where possible. If there's any extra sort of highways cash going spare, it would be great to to widen this path by, you know, a few feet in each direction. And that will make it much more comfortable for the volumes of people walking and cycling down it. If you have to have a shared path, if you can't run a separate cycle path, then it should be nice and wide. That said, I can't complain too much. It's, it's pretty idyllic. Um, the river's to your left the whole way. There's nice sort of uh, nice trees. It's really great and you know you could use this as a sort of transport solution for commuting to work or you can just come here to enjoy yourself it is that nice um, and that's the nice thing about cycling as well it's it's both fun but also practical the uh, the section coming up here um, is a little bit more wooded so that looks beautiful in the sun like this at night um, I wouldn't have a problem cycling down here particularly if I have lights on I know that some people don't like uh, more isolated parts of town uh, they maybe don't like uh, cycling through somewhere where uh, they feel that there's fewer people around. So that's something to take into account here if you're thinking of using this as a commuter a commuter route. That said, um, although it looks pretty, you know, away from everything, it's not too bad. Um, now, we're going to use the Teddington Lock footbridge. Uh, believe it or not, this is actually a footbridge that is on the uh, National Cycle Network, uh, or at least the, the London Cycle Network, the old one. Um, it's a designated cycle route. Unfortunately, it also has big no cycling signs on it, so 
we're going to obey those. And it also has these chicanes, which cause, unfortunately, cause um, huge traffic jams and make it much more difficult than it needs to be. Um, Given the what a great uh, great cycle route that this has been so far, it would be really good to have a proper second cycle bridge over the over the Thames here. Um, th that would be a great use of Kingston's money if they've got any to do it. Uh, uh, there are plenty of places in London which have you know bridges you can cycle on, and given this is a cycle route, it would be fantastic. Um, as it is. It's a nice old bridge. Um, it sort of stops at... The reason it looked like it was about to finish and then started again is because it stops at a sort of island, a little islet in the middle of the Thames. Um, but yeah, it's probably for the best not cycling on this. It's a little bit too narrow. Um, and, you know, you might be going going down too quickly. It, it would actually be physically possible to cycle on it, though. Um, it does have ramps going up both ends. You don't have to go down any steps. But, uh, yeah, you're not supposed to. I imagine most days, and I don't live around here, so I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a frequent visitor to the bridge, but I imagine this is probably about as busy as it gets. Um, it, it's probably uh, significantly less busy most days, but it's a really nice day for everyone to come down to the river. Um, <clears throat> now we're back off it, though. We jump back on our bike, and we head straight down Ferry Lane. And, uh, yeah... So those of you who uh, uh, know the geography of this part of town know that Teddington is on the other side of the river to Surbiton and Kingston. So that's why we've crossed the river. And uh, we're basically there now. This is Teddington. Um, this section, this isn't really part of the route. This is really just getting into the centre of Teddington uh, just so you can get to the high street. It looks pretty quiet here. I think it probably gets quite trafficy on uh, on a weekday around commuter time. So I wouldn't expect to be cycling like this on on the main roads but yeah we're here now and uh uh it's uh i think that was a pretty decent route i the, the bridge at the end was a bit of a shame because actually i expected to be able to cycle on it because it was a designated cycle route but it was very clear that you couldn't and also it did seem a bit impractical given the number of people on it but apart from that i'm very impressed with the uh particularly the portsmouth road cycle lane and uh the route through kingston town center was pretty all right maybe a bit busy on a sunny day like this uh, and the path through the forest uh, down by the sort of Ham Riverside bit, that was pretty nice too. Um, and especially the uh, the old road that they sort of converted into a, a sort of filtered pedestrian and cycles path. That was really good. So um, all that remains for me to say is two things. Firstly, you can download a map of this route in the description below the video. I should have said that earlier because not I know not everybody listens to the end. And uh, the other thing is to say, please do hit subscribe if you like this because... Um, that really builds the channel and uh, leave a comment underneath if you've got any uh, any feedback or if you'd like to request a future route. Thanks very much and goodbye.